everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel, who's here to break down tonight's NBA slate. What's happening, Tom? Yeah, we got a big 10-game slate, uh, really shaping up to be a high-scoring one, plenty of options across the board. With 10 games, of course, there's plenty of options across the board. So let's start with your favorite one, and that resides in Philadelphia. No Joel Embiid once again for the Sixers, which means Ben Simmons is the primary scorer for the Sixers team. He's your favorite stud on tonight's slate. How come? Yeah, I think this 8.5 price tag for Simmons tonight is a little bit too cheap. Like, you know, over the past few seasons, we've seen him up at, you know, the mid-9,000 range when he's really scoring. And this $8,500 price tag against the Nets on a, on a second night of a back-to-back the Nets are is really, really viable. And we're not really breaking the bank. Uh, the Nets are allowing 49.4 FanDuel points per game to point guards this season. It's the fifth worst in the league. We know there's a pace-up spot for the 76ers. They come in 20th in the league in pace. The Nets are sitting up at 9th, so a good step up against a weak defense. And really, you know, I see this as like a classic Ben Simmons game where, you know, he's not a, a truly high-volume scorer. We're not, you know, I don't want to throw in a three-point joke here, but he's going to take in the mid-teens when it comes to shots. He's going to have 10 assists, 12 rebounds. Like, he's going to push towards a double-double or a triple-double, and this $8,500 price tag is great tonight. Nets are on a second night of back-to-back. As you mentioned, they do struggle against point guards. Bottom five in the league in allowing fantasy points there. Yeah, Simmons is going to hit the three-point shot, but he is going to be a, both a facilitator and a scorer tonight for Philadelphia. A lot to like with Ben Simmons here tonight. Let's move on here, Tom, to another stud that you're all in on, and that brings us now, well, to Nikola Jokic, who's been a star all season long for the Denver Nuggets team, who is a bit short-handed potentially tonight, which means Nikola Jokic should see a higher usage potentially. Yeah, with uh, Jamal Murray listed as questionable, that's really the main thing. They have uh, Gary Harris listed as questionable. I don't think that impacts uh, Jokic too much. We already know that Paul Millsap is out. He's been out for a few games. And when we account for Murray being off the court, we see Jokic come in with a 33.0% usage rate, 1.48 FanDuel points per minute, which is a 6.4% increase in his usage and an extra 0.13 FanDuel points per minute. So it is a big step up. This game against the Hornets really isn't Amazing when it comes to, you know, a fantasy perspective. Two teams in the bottom three when it comes to pace. We have a 210 over under, which is the lowest on the board. But we're looking at a guy with a 33% usage rate who is also, a, you know, potentially pushing towards a triple-double. So I'm, I'm all over Jokic tonight, despite the game environment not being amazing, despite the, you know, pace not being amazing. I want the high usage. I want a guy that can easily go for 50 or 60 fandom points. Jokic has that usage. Jokic has that ability to give you 50, 60 fantasy points. Uh, there are some other centers that are on the board tonight. Of course, 10 games. A guy like Clint Capella is going to come to mind. But certainly, Nikola Jokic is out there for the taking as well. One more stud that's worth mentioning here, Tom. That brings us to the Dominator. Demaz is a bonus for the Indiana Pacers. Victor Oladipo's impending return is coming. But not quite yet. Demaz is a bonus. Could be in line for another big night tonight. Yeah, Sabonis has been really like playing like an all-star this year, averaging a double-double on the year. And we have 10 games. Like we have LeBron, Westbrook is back in tonight, Harden, Lillard, Luka, you know, if AD plays. Like we have a loaded slate and $8,300 for Sabonis, I think is really, really solid. Uh, pace up spot in a big way for Indiana. They are 24th in the league when it comes to pace. Minnesota is sitting at third overall, a 218 over under, which is awesome. You know, people are going to be, you know, box score watching. We see this most recent performance from Sabonis, uh, 32 Fandle points. He shot three of 12 from the field against the Philadelphia team, certainly tougher on defense. But he shoots 51% from the field this season. He's averaging 13 field goal attempts, you know, from the field. Really just overall a bad game from him, you know, in the most recent one. I see this as a bounce back spot against Minnesota. We know they play super fast. We know they're not good on defense. $8,300 is a great price tag, you know, combined with the fact that he still had a double-double in this most recent game. He just had a bad night from the field. So I'm going to expect a little bit of positive regression and another 45-point game from him. Even when he is struggling from the field, he's still producing numbers on the court for you and your fantasy team. It's a bonus, a double-double, even when struggling tonight against Minnesota. As you mentioned, Tom, just a bad defense. It's going to be a high-paced game. It's going to be a lot of scoring. It's going to be a lot of points uh, put up by both squads. A lot of fantasy puts up, put up, fantasy points, excuse me, put up by Demont Sabonis, allowing him to be in your lineups tonight. But in order to get these studs in there, you got to be able to find values. And with a 10-game slate, the values are out there. And they begin with Tomas Sadoransky. 
Yeah, forty six hundred dollars for Sadoransky. I think this is just like a, I want to say a safe option. We look at him, you know, a bit up and down, but the consistency overall he has in the season, 0.85 famed points per minute in a very modest 19% usage rate is interesting. You know, playing high, you know, mid 20s when it comes to uh, his minutes per game is great. A pace up spot against the Wizards, who are just terrible this year. Uh, we look at Sadoransky and okay, he doesn't shoot a high volume from the field. You know, that lies with you know a lot with Zach Levine when it comes to the Bulls offense. That's fine. But he's being productive in the limited usage that he has. This is against his former team. I don't know if you want to throw in the revenge factor there. But we're looking at a guy who has a 25 or so point floor, can push towards 35 or so FanDuel points. And I just want to lock in that consistency to spend up for those stars. As you said, Tomas Sadoransky has a bit of a revenge game today. I don't really think it applies here. But he's as solid as they come, right? Sadoransky is certainly somebody that you could put in there and feel good about it because he's not going to be a bust, much like our next player. We talked about Demonte Simonis, the dominator. What about Dr. New, Sakun Dumuya, who's been fantastic since Blake Griffin went down for the Pistons? He is still unfairly priced. He's too cheap. Yeah, and we have the Pistons, uh, they, they have uh, Christian Wood listed as questionable for tonight's game. And you look back at his game log in 34, 28, 34, 33, and 38 minutes in this recent stretch. And that is when Christian Wood is playing. Uh, we know they're kind of, you know, thin when it comes to the big men position uh, in Detroit. And, you know, 0. .70 fan points per minute isn't amazing this season in a tougher matchup against the Celtics. Uh, you know, but at number five, we have projected for 31 minutes, which is right in this range where he's been. Even if he produces at this point seven, we're going to see him around 24 or 25 FanDuel points tonight. So at $4,700 for a guy who's starting playing above 30 minutes, yeah, it's not the best matchup. I kind of want to lock in a guy that can exceed value, uh, maybe go a little bit further, and then just kind of, again, spend up for those stars tonight. We want players that are playing minutes that can be productive, even though it's a modest amount for him. Just get those minutes and then spend up. You can spend up because Dumuya is going to allow you to do it. He is absolutely someone who needs to be in your lineup tonight. I don't even care about Christian Wood, man. I know the numbers are going to be better with Wood not playing, but Dumuya is that good. Get him in there. One last value player to get to, and it's in Miami, where Tyler Harrow has played well as of late. He's played well, actually, really, all throughout his rookie season. Why do you like Harrow tonight? Yeah, so he comes in off the bench for Miami. Like you said, he's played, you know, really well for the majority of this season. You know, taking 10 field goal attempts off the bench is always something I like to pay attention to, especially when it's a player that doesn't necessarily have to compete with usage. You know, I spoke about Jordan McRae, you know, a few weeks ago in, in relation to Bradley Beal. This is kind of the same thing where he plays a good amount of minutes when Jimmy Butler isn't on the court taking 10 field goal attempts. A guy who's taking five, six, seven, eight, three pointers a game so shows a nice pure scoring upside. You know, this Spurs defense that they're playing tonight really isn't the same team we've seen in years past. It's a slight pace up spot for Miami. I'm not really too concerned with that. We have a 222 over under, which is very solid. You know, 0.79 FanDuel points per minute is solid for a player who's coming in off the bench under $5,000 and has shown a 30, sometimes 40 point upside with his pure scoring ability. So I like these guys under $5,000, get a bunch of minutes in there, get some shots in there specifically with Hero, and then spend up for the stars. Guys like Taylor Hero, who, much like Tomas Sadoransky, is solid, right? He's never going to just put up a zero. You know the minutes are going to be there. You know he's going to hit a couple of threes. Hero's a really good player in a really good spot at a really good price tonight to put him in your lineups. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Tom. It's been a blast. Appreciate your time. Yeah, it should be a good 10-game slate. Have a good one. I appreciate it. All right, coming up tomorrow, Jim Sadis will join me as we take a look at the conference championship weekend. From a DFS perspective, I need help. So do you. We'll break it down tomorrow. For Tom Vecchio, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.